Hey everybody, Steve here at Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm standing in front of this enormous monument, this private mausoleum that belongs to former president James Garfield. Now, I was here a couple of days ago and was not really very happy to discover that they were closed. Like so many of the presidential final resting places, they have very weird hours. They close for one or two or three days a week. And then when they are open, maybe they're only open for a few hours. Like this one, I believe is only open for a few days a week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I think they're closed Monday and Tuesday. I arrived on Monday, but then to actually go inside, the hours are something like 10 o'clock to 3 or 3.30. So I'm here, at, it's about 10 minutes to 10. Should be opening soon, in just a few minutes if they actually are going to be open today and if you go online you'll discover that there are a number of different websites that give different conflicting information about this site and many other sites so that's why I arrived on Monday because it said it was open for sure on Monday and what they were talking about was the cemetery being open this is a public cemetery and I believe it is open seven days a week but the monument James Garfield's crypt and final resting place is not open seven days a week so definitely check before you come unless you want to be frustrated like I was and I've been driving around looking at other presidential grave sites for the last two days and now I'm back. Had to come all the way back, hundreds of miles back to see if I could get in today. Now I called the cemetery. They said yes, it's definitely open today. So we will see in just a few minutes. It's almost 10 o'clock. It's supposed to open up at 10 o'clock to let people in to see the interior. So I'm gonna walk over there now. I see somebody who went over there. So let's go see if we can get in today. Now, this is interesting. This wasn't here the other day, which would have been really helpful. This little sign underneath, it says Garfield Memorial, open today, Wednesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., May 1st to August. October 30th. I wonder if they did this because dozens of people were here. I'm sure they were all calling the cemetery like I was and I think they were getting a little upset with so many phone calls but I was thinking to myself and maybe I even said in the, my video last week it's like why not put up a sign letting us know when it's open and when it's not. Now this the, the larger sign says April to November 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., but it doesn't say which days. This one does say Wednesday through Sunday, but this is a brand new sign. This was not here two days ago, which would have been really, really helpful. Yeah, so here's another sign that wasn't here the other day that would have helped dozens of us. I spent a couple hours here waiting. I thought maybe they were at lunch, so I waited for them to come back for lunch Then, because all the websites said they were open. And then I finally... Oh, look at the doors open. I can't believe it. <laughs> Ta-da! For those of you who clicked on this video because of the unbelievable headline, I'm going to show you something right now that I didn't notice when I first came through these front doors. As you can see, the design motif on the floor of James Garfield's gravesite or final resting place includes not just one swastika, but multiple swastikas. But there's so much to look at when you first come through the doors that I didn't even notice the floors. I walked right by them and didn't notice them until I was getting ready to leave. Needless to say, I was a little surprised and shocked. So I asked the guide why they were there. And I was also curious how many other visitors over the years have also noticed them and what they might have said about them. So if you're only interested in knowing why the swastikas are here, feel free to fast forward to the end of this video to find out what he said. If you'd like to see more of the interior of James Garfield's very grand monument, as well as the casket where his body is laid to rest, just keep watching. Now this is definitely larger than life, isn't it? Uh, the statue is about, I think it's about seven feet tall. Oh, okay. It looks even larger from here. I believe it's about seven. Uh, he was tall, and especially for that era, he was about six foot tall. Yeah. Weighed over 200 pounds. Wow. Like, you know, for that area, he was, he was well above average. Now, does this go all the way up, or is there still more above there? Uh, well, as far as where... Uh, the ceiling? I mean, is that the top of what you see outside? No. no yeah, I thought it looked a lot larger outside. It is. That's the inner dome. Say that again. He, Garfield had only a 200-day period uh, as president, uh, second shortest presidency in... 
history. Yeah, and the shortest was also here in Ohio, right? William Henry Harrison yeah. was president for 30 days, and of course he died from pneumonia. Garfield died from the complications related to an assassination attempt. He was walking through a train station near the Capitol building, going to catch a train that was taking him out to the East Coast. Uh, his family was waiting for him out there up in New Jersey. And he was, this was a 4th of July weekend. And he was gonna drop, take the train out there, meet up with them, visit his old alma mater. He, he attended Williams College. Uh, that's where he got his uh, degree from. So he had all that planned for that weekend. But as he was walking through the terminal, a man named Charles Gateau, uh, who was waiting for him, shot Garfield twice. Once, just a grazing wound on his arm, but the other one hit him in the lower right back area. And that, that began the ordeal of Garfield's efforts to, to convalesce. Kind of days, uh, go to the local churches here in Northeast Ohio, and, and preach sermons. So he was definitely a man of man of peace. I hadn't really thought about that. So he was the only ordained minister who be, also became president. Correct. Some pretty interesting presidential history or, or trivia. You know, when you visit yeah. the, the different Sorry. presidential grave sites, you find they all have some pretty interesting oh, yeah. backgrounds. Now the statue here was carved by a marble that came from Carrera, Italy. And it does, uh, it, it depicts Garfield during the era in which he was serving in the House of Representatives. Hmm. Uh, he served nine terms as a member of the House. That's a lot. And then he became president. And then became president. And then if you like. Oh, well, okay, when I come back. From, whatever. Okay, have a good day. And the guy was just saying that this entire thing was was uh, built. It, they raised a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, right? Yes. That's all it cost. That's all it cost at the time. Now you can barely buy a house. Well, I don't think you can even buy a house in California for that anymore. Oh, California, <laughs> yeah, even a one bedroom house. My son tells me that in California you can barely buy anything for much less than a million. Yeah, yeah, but especially in Los Angeles or if, yeah. if you're close to the beach. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous, yeah. And rents are obscene. Oh, yeah. Before we head down to the basement to take a look at their caskets, let's go up these stairs real quick and see what this monument looks like from overhead, from the balcony. Now, so these stairs are really steep. Look at this. It's like going up at the Statue of Liberty or something which I remember doing many, many years ago. Oh, more. So I think he said this very upper dome was not open to the public, but this one is. Okay, space between railing is wide. Possibility to slip between railing exists. Use caution. Yeah, I guess if you're a little kid, especially. It's amazing to think that this only cost $150,000 to build. Now I just need to make sure I don't drop my phone down there. Oh, what a vantage point. Wow, this is pretty impressive, isn't it? I don't know if you can tell from the, the video just how impressive this is. Let me walk around. Let me see how the people have arrived. Let's 
see what's at these windows here. Oh, there's my car. <laughs> Faithful Casper Jr. He's always there, somewhere in the background. This is definitely the experience. Not like any other gravesite I've ever visited, that's for sure. Well, you kind of wonder how they got up scaffolding and stuff to get up this high. And only $150,000 for all of this. Okay, so now we'll make the trek back down these treacherous stairs. <laughs> At least they have a, a railing here. The caskets are downstairs in the basement, and according to presidential historian Kurt Dion, of all the presidential grave sites, this is the only one where you actually see the casket. The other presidents are all either in the ground, in a tomb, or in a sarcophagus, but this is the only one where you actually see the casket. Yeah, the guy at her docent, he was just saying that this is referred to as the most ornate of all of the president's final resting places and it definitely is i mean you can you can see wow the average height of each floor in a building is typically around 14 feet and this structure is 180 feet tall which means it's approximately the same size as a 12-story building and this is the grave site for a single president the first lady and their family the way their caskets are on display here, it almost feels as if they could have just died yesterday. But President James Garfield died 140 years ago, and First Lady Lucretia Garfield died 104 years ago. James Garfield was only 49 years old when he was shot on July 2nd, 1881, by his assassin, Charles Gateau. Garfield was born on November 19th, 1831, in Moreland Hills, Ohio, and died September 19, 1881, in Elberon, New Jersey. He was a Republican, and because of his death, only served as president for six months. He was shot in the arm and in the back, and didn't die immediately from the shooting. In fact, it's now known and believed that he wouldn't have died at all from the shooting if it had happened just a few years later. Apparently, back in 1881, here in the U.S., Doctors were still pretty ignorant about hygiene and bacteria when it came to open wounds. So apparently after half a dozen to a dozen doctors stuck their dirty, unwashed, unsanitized fingers into the bullet wounds, digging around with their fingers, trying to find and extract the bullets, they inadvertently caused a major infection, which ultimately led to the president's death on September 19, 1881. The president and the first lady had seven children, and she lived to be 85 years old, dying on March 13, 1918, in South Pasadena, California. Much of the rest of her life was devoted to preserving the legacy of her husband by creating something of a presidential library at their former home here in Cleveland, Ohio, not far from this cemetery. And even though it's not the first official presidential library, Many consider it to effectively be a model for more formal and official presidential libraries that would follow. The two cremation urns that you see placed next to the caskets belong to their daughter Molly and her husband Joseph Stanley Brown. Molly was just 14 years old when her father was assassinated, but seven years later when she was 21 years old, she married Joseph who had been Garfield's private secretary. She died in 1947 at the age of 80, and Joseph died six years earlier in 1941 at the age of 83. I find it kind of sad that none of the other children are buried here with their parents. The rest just all seem to be randomly buried in other cemeteries. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't notice these swastikas right here in the entryway floor design until I was getting ready to leave and just happened to look down at the floor. At first I was a little shocked and surprised, but then I was just curious and asked the guide why they were here. 
I also asked him how many other visitors noticed them, and if so, what they say about them. And he pretty much said what I thought he would say. The swastika itself is an ancient symbol that's been used by many different cultures around the world for at least the last five to seven thousand years. In Sanskrit, the word swastika means good fortune. Traditionally, it's been seen as a sacred religious symbol and still is today by many cultures. Ironically and sadly, Adolf Hitler turned this symbol of spirituality and good fortune into a symbol of hate. The Nazi party wasn't even founded until 1920, nearly 40 years after Garfield's death. So when this monument was designed and built back in the late 1800s, this was simply a symbol of spirituality and good fortune. As for how many people notice and what they have to say about it, the guide said that like me, some people do notice it, and some do have mixed feelings about it, while most others see it for what it is, and within the historical context in which it appears, and understand that it's an ancient symbol that's been used throughout history to mostly promote good fortune and positivity. And besides me, I know of at least one other person who also noticed the swastikas here. Last week, when I posted my video announcing that I had visited all 39 presidential gravesites, I received a comment from Matthew Woodworth asking me if I had noticed the swastikas at James Garfield's final resting place. So I replied, funny you should mention that. It just so happens to be the topic of my very next presidential video. So, besides me and Matthew, have any of you been here? And did any of you happen to look down and see this very politically charged symbol? Personally, if I had known this symbol was here today, I would not have worn my red shirt. But in the same way that symbols can be interpreted in either positive or negative ways, so can colors. In some contexts, red can be a very negative color. But red is also synonymous with Santa Claus and Valentine's Day. So as far as I'm concerned, in the end, it all really comes down to intention. And in this case, I'm sure the architect and designers had the best of intentions. This week, I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my newest Patreon supporters, Jenny Asher and Jan Banner. Thank you so much, Jenny and Jan, for your extra generous donations to my channel. They're very appreciated and mean a lot. And thank you to all of you who have taken the time to give my videos thumbs up when you like them. That really helps a lot too. So was it worth the extra couple hundred miles and hanging around for two days to come back and, and visit the inside of James Garfield's final resting place? Absolutely, totally. I'm so glad I did. And I had heard that this was the best of all of the presidential grave sites. And I think everyone's right, especially inside. Now, outside, well, the outside is pretty impressive too, but there are a couple others I think maybe tie for the outside being very, very impressive. But uh, inside, this has all the others beat, I think. It's really, really gorgeous and definitely worth taking the time and the extra miles to come back and see it in person. So I'm glad I made the extra effort to do that. Until our next historic road trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.